Well, good morning. It's Brother Peter again. This is Tidbits from the Word. And we were in uh, Psalm 107 a little bit ago, and we were talking about the water, and we were talking about where our refuge is. Our refuge is in the Lord. I know that our human refuge is that we need to uh, sustain air, water, and food. Otherwise, we die, or we're sick, or we're in, uh, in problem. Now, there was a group of people back in the Bible days that God uh, had chosen to be his people. They were called Israelites, and the Israelites had been, at one time in their history, had been a large group of people, and famine had driven them down toward the land of Egypt. And uh, the Egyptians gave them a parcel of land that had real fertile soil, that the water from the uh, river, there the Nile River, uh, came out of its banks every year and fertilized this big valley. And in that big valley, they could grow uh, food and hay and stuff and stubble and stuff that they made bricks with and uh, well or something to eat. Well, what happened as time went on, they became under the bondage of Israel, and I mean Egypt, and Egypt whipped the people and treated them bad and made them slaves. And uh, but who do you think was making the food, growing the food for the Egyptians? Who do you think was doing the work for the Egyptians? The Israelite children were. And God had put them in a land of blessing there in a sense. But as they, the more they forgot their God, the more uh, they became uh, mingled with the Egyptian gods and Egyptian people. And things became uh, that way. Now, for instance, uh, we see that later on in life after God delivered them. They, they said uh, to Moses, while uh, 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 Moses was there, they said to Aaron, by the way, and Moses was up on the mountain, they said to Aaron, make us a god uh, like them Egyptians had in a sense. And they made a golden calf. See, so remember that? So they had learned that other people served other gods. And they thought, well, we need a god we can see. And uh, so they did that. But let me tell you what God did for the children of Israel. God followed the children of Israel in a rock. And that rock, and water ran out of that rock. And Jesus Christ claimed to be that rock. He said, I was that rock that followed those children of Israel, God's chosen people, and water ran out of that rock. You say, <laughs> Peter, you're crazy as a bed bug, a rock following people around. Well, if a pillar of fire followed them around every night, and a cloud followed them around by day to keep them cool, and this rock that the water came out of, had, they had to have water. How much water do you think two million people would consume in one day? They consume a bunch of water. Now, let's go over here and see they were in trouble. Now, in, in uh, 107, book uh, Psalms 107, concerning God in his word, it said, and gathered, he gathered the water, oh, and he gathered the people from the east and the west, from the south and from the north, and he put them out there. And they wandered in the wilderness a, a sultry way. They found no city to dwell in. There was no place where there was water in a particular spot where they could dwell. They, they couldn't settle or dwell, you know. Look at your geological uh, standard report from all over the world and see if you don't see most every town or city in any country was founded where there were bodies of fresh water so that people had water they could drink or, or do things with. Now, hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted in them. They were physically hungry and thirsty, and their souls fainted in them. Those two things can make your soul faint in you. One of them is hunger and thirst fleshly. The other is hunger and thirst for the word and not be in it, and not get in it. You know something, sometimes you get out there and you get sweating and working and you don't realize, well, I hadn't took a drink of water. And all of a sudden, bam, your heart says to you, you, got, you need some water, boy. You need to get you some water. You're fixing to faint and fall on the ground. Well, our life is like that. And spiritually, we need to drink some spiritual water also. 
We get away from it every now and then, and when we do, we're in trouble. It said, I love verse 6. Verse 6 says, And then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. Hey, once they cried to the Lord, he delivered them out of their distress. But you got to ask God first. You got to cry out to God first. You don't get out here and seek to try to answer it yourself. You pray about it and you ask the Lord about it. It's like my preacher says all the time: a prayer of faith, a good prayer, is worth more than the fifty uh, hours of getting out, beating the pavement, and trying to do it yourself. So God can answer. I sit right here day after day and work around the house and do things and pray for the Lord to send work in for me because I have to have a certain amount of money, a certain time of the month to pay certain people bills. And so I have to do that. And uh, my desire right now is 68. And personally, if I had I taken better care of, of uh, worked out some things better, uh, I could sit in front of this uh, thing a day in and day out and not have to be concerned about the money part of it. I wish I'd like to be there. And uh, then he said in verse 7, He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of uh, habitation. Now, physically, they're going to end up uh, in a city called Jerusalem. It's a place of habitation. And they're going to go to other little cities and places that are by the river uh, and by the water of Galilee and by different places. And they said, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works in chapter 8. Uh, verse 8, excuse me. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Now, we've got to praise the Lord today, my friends. We've got away from praising the Lord and we're praising men nowadays. And we're praising different things, everything but what? Listen to what God does. He satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Now, God satisfies the longing soul. I get up in the morning early. I'm longing. I, I go to bed and I say, man, I got to get some sleep so I can get up early in the morning and get in this word. I love getting in this Word. Do you know this, this Bible I got gets skinnier and skinnier every day? When I first started in it, I said, Man, have I got to read the whole thing? I just had got saved, and I said, I don't know if I could read that in a hundred years. Big book like that. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's 40 years later, and my book's only about, got down there where it was about an inch thick. And I began to realize how little it really is and how big the words mean and what it contains. It contains the words of life. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. He's saying the affliction is like iron that you're bound with. If you're bound by the world, the binding of the world is like iron. It binds you down stiff and hard and it's like being bound by iron. It's just like if you had a pair of iron handcuffs on you. You can't break loose from them because they're iron. If you were in shackles, iron shackles, you can't break loose from that iron. And that's the way the world holds you. The world holds you like iron. It holds you everything that you do that's part of the world is like iron. It says because they rebelled against the word of God, and uh, uh, condemn uh, the conceal of the Most High. They, um, because they rebelled against him, they brought themselves under a condemnation of the Most High. And uh, he, uh, the Lord God dealt with these folks in a serious hard way at different times. He had to do different things. It said, therefore he brought down their heart with labor and they fell down, and there was no help. Listen, they got so far away from God at one time that there was no help for them. Now, I, I did an excerpt today over in Matthew where it said God spoke in parables because he didn't want those Jewish fellows over there that put him on the cross that denied him 